we stand for the confession of forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. The Son of Righteousness shall rise with shining beams of healing. Let us gather under the wings of God's mercy. Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned against you and against our sisters and brothers. Our words and deeds have not proclaimed your reign of justice and truth. We have failed to watch and pray for the signs of your advent among us. Forgive us our sin and come quickly to save us. Amen. In the advent of Christ, the dawn from on high breaks upon us with light and healing. Through Jesus Christ, God looks with favor upon us and forgives you all your sins. Amen. Amen. Join us for the gathering song, please.
Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son by his coming. Strengthen us to serve you and purify lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of, the, of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth. Their righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of the Lord as salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Arrogant and think that we are better. 
and others around us. A Texas farmer was touring England. He happened to meet an English farmer and asked him, what size farm do you have? The Englishman proudly announced, 35 acres. 35 acres, the Texan scoffed. Why, I get in my truck at 8 a.m. and I start driving. And at noon, I'm still on my farm. I can eat lunch and I can start driving again. And at 5 p.m., I am still on my farm. <laughs> oh yeah, the Englishman nodded in understanding. I had a truck like that once too. Arrogance. It can be short-lived. Arrogance and pride can be pulled right un out from under us quickly. And that can be a good thing. John knew who he was. And John knew who he was not. John was the baptizer. John was a witness to the light. John was the voice crying out in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord. John was humble. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not even worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. That is who John was. John knew who he was. And John knew who he was not. He knew he was not a prophet. He knew he was not the Messiah, but the one who would point the way, prepare the way for the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Do you know who you are? I can respond, I'm a daughter, a mother, a sister, a pastor, a director of evangelical mission, a friend, a neighbor. Who are you? Think about it. Who are you? How would you respond to that question? And who are we? We are children of God, claimed and named by God in the waters of baptism marked with the cross of Christ forever, and sealed with the Holy Spirit. Each one of us is a child of God, God's own. This is who we are. And who it is that we are not, we are not God. Oh, but that's so challenging for me sometimes. If you know me, you know that I like to be in control. I think I, control, I can control my life, and everything that's happening around me. But I can't. None of us can. Because we are not God. God alone is in control of our lives. And that is such good news. God alone knows us so, so well, inside and out. Knows the words we will speak before they're ever on our lips. God knows our ups and our downs, our joys and our sorrows, our dreams, our challenges, our hesitations, our fears. God knows our strengths. He has given us those strengths. And God also knows our weaknesses and our failures. God knows all of this. And still yet, God chooses us. God loves us. God calls in the midst of all of life, God calls us to be vessels for God's ongoing work to love and bless God's people and to bless the world. In every kind of gesture of love, whether it is big or whether it is small, whether it has immediate impact or whether it's difficult to measure the impact, in every kind gesture of love, God's ongoing work in this world continues through each one of us. Every time you listen deeply to someone, every time you share your time, your talent, your resources, every time you call someone or text someone or respond in a positive way to a, a Facebook post, Every time you visit someone, every time you smile at someone or speak a kind word or open the door or say thank you or share a compliment, every time you do these things, you are partnering with God in God's ongoing work. 
You are sharing God's love and grace and hope and peace and light with the world. Your gestures offered in, in love join with God's love as God creates and recreates each new day. As God brings forgiveness and reconciliation, healing and strength, care and compassion, peace and hope to a weary world. We are called. We are invited to partner with our God, who is a God of love. The God who sent his son Jesus to exemplify this love, and by laying down his life, Jesus redeemed the world in and through this love of God, this generous, abundant love. What a delight. What a privilege that we get to participate in God's unfolding story of love and grace and mercy. And in so doing, God's story meets our story and brings light into the darkness of this world. Amen. stand and join us for the hymn of the day, number 256.
us to have faith together with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, that we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church. The world and all who wait await God's day of restoration. <laughs> Send forth your faithful people with words of promise and forgiveness. Teach your church to be bold in revealing your good news in word and in deed. Send forth your light. Yeah, your mercy shine upon us. Reveal your majesty in mountain peaks flowing rivers, and blossoming wilderness groves. Heal the earth where it longs for renewal. Bring wholeness to the earth and all of its creatures. Send forth your light, and let your mercy shine upon us. Turn the hearts of the nation toward righteousness and peace. Increase cooperation for justice between countries, commonwealths, political parties, and diplomatic leaders. In times of prosperity, Direct leaders to be generous for the sake of all. Send forth your light. Let your mercy shine upon us. Comfort your people with tender words of love and healing. Surround all who are grieving, all who know depression or anxiety, or all who feel lonely or forgotten. Be a steadfast presence when all else feels uncertain. Send forth your light and let your mercy shine upon us. Grant holy patience to all who are waiting this season, especially those on our prayer list and in our hearts. Give hope to those seeking employment, bring reassurance to people awaiting new diagnosis or treatments, protect expectant parents, watch with those who keep bedside vigil, send forth your light. And let your mercy shine upon us. With you a thousand years is like a day. Bless the memory of the saints from ages past, anticipation of saints yet to be born. Inspire us to live with faith as we await your new heaven and new earth. Send forth your light. Amen. And let your mercy shine upon us. Listen to these in all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. Also with you. Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of hope strengthen your hearts as you await the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints. Almighty God, Father, and Son. Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Other than announcements, Tuesday, we have a men's Bible breakfast at 9.
Wednesday evening, we have a city supper at 5.30 and service at 6.30. And then committee meetings are scheduled for 5.15 on Thursday. Dismissed by the great grace of God, we come to worship. So, go in peace. Grace is with you. of God. Go in peace. Christ is with you.